Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jeb, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> little pot. I've been making my spring tonic for 66 years, and this is the teensiest batch I ever whomped up. Well, it ain't your fault, Granny. Aunt Pearl didn't send as many roots, yards, and berries as she generally does. Yeah. Well, it ain't Pearl's fault, neither. They've had a long, hard winter back home. I know. She said back to our cabin, the snow was three feet deep. And even deeper outside. <laughs> No use fussing over what we can't have. I'll go get some bottles and we'll commence to cork up what we got. Well, I'm all set to take Granny's tonic around the neighborhood. Is that so gonna help you? Helen May, will you tell that ape of yours to stop doing everything I do? I get a wheelbarrow, she gets a wheelbarrow. I paint a sign, she paints a sign. <laughs> Let's see your sign, Bessie. <laughs> Dumb old animal. Didn't even dot the eyes. <laughs> hey, Granny, you don't want no hairy old monkey toting your tonic around the neighborhood, do you? No, I don't, so get back to your chores. Oh, I'm talking about that monkey. Neither one of you is gonna tote my tonic, because I ain't got enough tonic to tote. Now get, both of you. <laughs> Copycat! <laughs> we ain't gonna have more than enough for just the family and a few close friends, Ellie. Now, this bottle is for Mr. Drysdale. Granny, you sure you want to tonic him again? What you mean? Well, last year, he liked to went wild. Why, well, grabbed his wife, hugged her, and kissed her, and carried on something scandalous. <laughs> I wondered why she asked me for two bottles this year. <laughs> oh, speaking of married folks, Ellie, has that Hollywood movie actor popped the question yet? Oh, you mean Dice Ripron? I don't mean Roscoe H. <laughs> no, ma'am, Dice ain't nice when I'm married. <laughs> Who's this bottle for? Never mind. Ellie May, your monkey's whomping the tire of that little dog again. Well, Jethro went and got her mad. Well, I think what she's riled about is the dog jumping in her wheelbarrow. Ellie, if you're going outside, take my tonic skimmings and put it around my geranium. Yes, some granny. Bessie, you pick on somebody your own size. <laughs> Now, listen here, Arnie. You stay out of Bess's wheelbarrow, or she's gonna snatch you hairless. <laughs> she ain't none too fun to you to commence with. Nothing gets her raw like you messing around with her wheelbarrow. You just stay out of it, you hear? Otherwise, she might put a knot on you and then knock it off. <laughs> Come on, Betsy. Let's put these tonic skimmings around Granny's geranium. Granny, this may not be the biggest batch of tonic you ever made, but it's a good one. I hope so. I'll know more when I check my geranium. What's the tonic supposed to do for it? <laughs> Just nothing for the geranium. 
But if a happy bunch of worms come up out of the ground and does this, I'll know it's a good batch. That's some bottle, I see. Yeah. These two bottles are for Mr. Drysdale. Two this year. Special request from his wife. <laughs> and this one is for Dash Riprock. I'll get that rascal to propose to Ellie if it's the last thing I ever do. Now, hold on, Granny. Ellie ain't marrying no boy. has to be tonic to the altar. Why not? Back home, my tonic saved many a girl from being old maid. Ellie ain't no old maid. Jed, when are you gonna get it through your head? When a girl passes 14, she's old maid. <laughs> passes 16, she's a spinster. And when she passes 18, Forget it. That may be back in the country, but here in California, I hear tell a girl's getting married as late as 19 or 20. Jed, you old apple knocker. You gonna swallow a story like that? Never mind what I swallow. You just see to it that Dash Ripper I don't swallow none of that tonic. But why, what can I do? She ain't gonna get him with her cooking. You won't let me draw down on him with a 12 gauge. What else is there? Love. Love? Love. If and when Dash Rip Rock proposes to Ellie, it'll be on account of love, and that's my final word. All right, Jed. Whatever you say. You're the boss. Good. I'll take these two bottles over to Mr. Drysdale. Fine. It'll be for love. Dash is going to love my tonic. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're here, Jethro. I want you to give me a ride to Mr. Drysdale's bank. Okay, Granny. Hey! <laughs> in the wheelbarrow, you knucklehead on that truck. Get me out of here. <laughs> What is this? Well, haven't you heard? Miss Hathaway is engaged to be married. Oh, what? Oh, no, Miss Murray, I'm not officially engaged. I've only received a proposal. Oh, 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 back to work, all of you. And no coffee break this morning. <laughs> Who proposed? None other than the esteemed founder of Middlesbrough Watchers, Professor P. Casper Biddle himself. <laughs> is this not back in town? Chief. Well, I thought he lived up in the Tehachapi Mountains with those condors. He does. Consequently, our only communication is by carrier pigeon. This morning, as I was having breakfast, this winged messenger of love lit upon my windowsill with a brief but thrilling communique attached to her tiny leg. He proposed by pigeon? <laughs> yes. And a bird lover that he is, he couched his proposal in the language of the ornithologist. He asked me to be the mother of his nestling. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, you wouldn't really marry that bird brain, would you? Whether or not I accept his proposal, I must ask you to show the respect due the commander-in-chief of Biddle's Bird Watchers, of which I have the honor to be flock master of the Beverly Hills Nest. Okay, okay. Well, while his work in the preservation of a condor... <laughs> Commander Biddle. Stand at ease, flock master Hathaway. You're not in uniform. Mr. Guysdale. Aye. You received my message. Yes, but how did you get here so quickly? Helicopter. This is an errand of the utmost urgency. Oh, really? Well, what I... is your answer? Well, oh, I need time to think. There is no time. Say yes. Quickly, please. <laughs> I need you. Oh, but please, you're sweeping me off my feet. This is unfair. Yeah. I like it. Do you mind? <laughs> I'm sure this will help you decide. It's a condor egg, which the mother was forced to abandon. Oh, th this is a magnificent gift, Professor, but... It's not a gift. I want you to hatch it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the nestling you asked her to mother? Yes. Oh, fine. Well, you seem the ideal person. You're a bird lover. You sit here all day. You expect me to, 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 to sit on this, this egg? <laughs> oh, no, no, of course not. I'm going out now and get you a small incubator. Just keep the egg warm. Hold on, Biddle. Biddle. Biddle Schmidtle. He's not hatching any buzzards in my bank. Well, it's the little professor. How are you? I'm in a terrible hurry, Granny. Matter of life and death. I'll be right back. Mr. Drysdale, I want to talk to you alone. Yes, Granny. 
Where'd you get the egg, Miss Jane? Hmm? Oh, uh, Professor Biddle brought it to me. I'd sure like to get a look at his chickens. <laughs> My dog is Ellie. When you put on a dress, you are prettier than a Jersey heifer in a clover patch. Mr. Fowles. Where are you going, all gushy now? Well, no place. Granny said to fix up for when Dash Riprock comes by to purpose. Did Granny say Dash was going to purpose? Well, yes, sir. Said I ain't going to be an old maid no more. Ellie, honey, you ain't an old maid. Well, Granny says I am. A old maid, a spinster, and for near to forget it. Did she say anything about her tonic? No, sir. It's still in a kettle on the stove. Oh, I've forgotten my cookies. Are you making cookies again? Yes, sir, for Dash. The last batch I made him disappear. But, uh, <laughs> Ellie. Fancy Clampett, get out of Granny's tonic. She's gonna skin you alive. <laughs> Freddie was too late. These cookies is burnt brown and hard as rocks. Well, I ain't put them in the oven yet. <laughs> you rang, Chief? You bet I rang. Granny has told me of a shocking and disgraceful situation which must be remedied immediately, or there will be swift and severe retaliation. Yeah, well, did I tell you that? I guess you said that Dash Riprock had been playing fast and loose with Ellie May. Oh, that, yeah. He's had five dates with her. Twice he kept her out till put near nine o'clock. And still no ring on her finger. Shocking, disgraceful. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but what can I do? See that he swallows this. Yeah, see too. What is it? My spring tonic. Her spring tonic. And if he's got one spark of love in his heart, that'll set it to blazing. <laughs> Marvelous stuff. Fabulous. <laughs> it sure put a tiger in your tank last spring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. Well, I grabbed my wife. None for me this year. <laughs> you should have said so. I already left two bottles at your house. You mean Margaret already <laughs> got them? <laughs> I reckon so. Back home. My spring tonic has done more for romance than hay rides. <laughs> yes, I know it possesses some rather remarkable properties. Uh, tell me, Granny, do you have an extra biddle of uh, bottle? <laughs> I'm afraid not. She can have mine. Your wife has likely downed both bottles by now and probably hollering for more. <laughs> I may have to go out of town on business. Well, first I want to talk to you about Ellie's wedding. Now we want the best that money can buy. You can hire a five-dollar preacher. <laughs> oh, Commander Biddle, I see you found an incubator. Flockmaster Hathaway, if you were in uniform, I would strip you of rank and empty your canteen. <laughs> but, but, but why? The charge is child neglect. Another three minutes and that precious condor egg would have been cold. Then the charge would have been... <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if you can be trusted to hatch this nestling. Oh, y y yes, I can. It's just that I have other duties and my employer... Plus... Nothing supersedes your sacred duties as a mother. <laughs> Perhaps the flock master of the Glendale nest... Oh, no, 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 please, g give me another chance. I promise to watch the egg devotedly. Forsaking all others? Yes. In sickness and in health? Yes. For better or for oh, worse? Yes. No. Oh, yes. Excuse me, I thought I heard a wedding. Merely Miss Hathaway vowing to be a good mother. Then it's definite. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, it's, it's all set. She knows. Congratulations <laughs> to you both. When is the big event? Well, any time now, a condor egg... Oh, but Miss Murray, perhaps you could get the professor, uh, P. Casper, a cup of coffee. No, thanks. A tea? I never partake of stimulants in any form. Pure mountain spring water is Mother Nature's champagne. Oh, let, let me fill your, your canteen. Yes. We have pure spring water in our cooler. <laughs> Be right back. Oh, Miss Hathaway, I'm so happy for you. Well, we're keeping it a secret. You must promise not to tell anyone. Not a soul. <laughs> 
Is this right? Is it decent? Is it honorable? No. of expectant fatherhood. I'm as nervous as a gilded flicker. Here, Commander, have a deep, soothing draft of spring tonic. Oh, water. Nature champagne. <laughs> Thank you. To that unborn king of the sky. Bottoms up. You don't have any. I drank my fill at the cooler. To the condor. Long live the king! <laughs> May he reign forever. Supremus Kylorum. <laughs> Flockmaster Hathaway. Yes. Did I ever tell you that you look remarkably like a condor? <laughs> it's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. I can believe that. I mean, after all, what is more beautiful than a Jimno Gyps Californianus? Here, here. <laughs> Miss Jamie's granny. Oh, hi there, Professor Bill. Ellie May, sweet, lovely child of nature who calls the crested jay from his perch and tames the wild Corvus Bracarinkus. <laughs> you were saying, Commander? <laughs> yes, I was saying. What was I saying? I gotta rush home. My tummy is commencing to eat through my kettle. Bye, y'all. Nice to see you again, Professor. Wait for me. I'm going with them. You are not. But I want to watch Ellie charm the birds from the trees. I think I'm in love with her. Casper, how can you be so fickle? I thought you cared for me. Are you going to tell me now that I'm just another pretty face? Well, no. Think of the baby condor who will soon occupy that incubator. Are you going to desert him? I can't help it. All of a sudden, I want to fly, like an eagle. Be my guest. <laughs> now see what you've done. <laughs> oh, thank goodness they got away. Don't stop here. Drive me around to the kitchen. I gotta save my tonic. Yes, please. <laughs> That Kittle story got her home in a hurry, didn't it? Sure did. Oh, uh, you got company. Dice Rip Rock? No, that little bird watching fella, uh, Professor Bill. Well, we just saw him down to the bank. How'd he get here so fast? Well, he was running when I seen him. Anyway, he's waiting for you. In the parlor? No. No, he's sitting up yonder, drinking out of his canteen, whistling like a bird. <laughs> Ellie May, you should have seen it. He ran up that tree just like a squirrel. If I didn't know better, I'd swear that little rascal had been tonic. Come on, Death Row! Tell him in! Reckon you're gonna be all right? Sure, I checked him over. Just had the wind knocked out of him. I don't wonder. You must have dropped 30 foot out of that tree. <laughs> Good thing you fell in the doctor's yard, Professor. Well, I don't think he can talk yet. Well, put him on the sofa in the parlor here. I'll fetch something to bring him around. <laughs> Jed Clampett speaking. Oh, hi there, Miss Jane. No, he's here. Just fell out of the tree. <laughs> oh, Granny's got him in hand. Her and Ellie. Ellie? Mr. Club, but don't leave the professor alone with her. He's under the influence of Granny's tonic. I I'll get there as quickly as I can. <laughs> How you feeling, Professor? Oh, he's coming along just Ellie fine. Me, you better go fetch Granny. I think the professor's a mite feverish. Well, well, yes, sir, Pa. Oh, no, I'm fine now, but how did I get here? Last I remember, I was at the bank. Well, uh... Incidentally, I can highly recommend their water. <laughs> I just talked to Miss Hathaway. She'll be right over. But she mustn't desert our unborn king of the sky. What? 
Buck Master Hathaway is hatching a condor egg for me. Professor, I think you better lay back down. Here you are, Professor. A little of my spring tonic will have you feeling sprightly again. Hold on, man. Oh, it's all right, Jed. I cut it for city folks, and I cut it some more for him. All the same, I don't think he ought to have any. Who's the doctor here? You or me? You, but... Thanks just the same, Granny, but I never partake of stimulants in any form. Pure spring water is all I ever drink. Professor, would you like one of my home-baked cookies? Yeah. No. no. That's two to one. <laughs> Girls, I gotta talk to you. Nature's champagne. Please let me go get him, Chief. I can't do it. I'm leaving town. But I don't dare leave him up there with Ellie. He's been tonic. So has my wife. That's why I'm leaving town. Matter of fact, Ravenswood is packing for me right now. And Miss Murray can take over. It's terribly important to me. Miss Hathaway, I can't believe that you really want to marry that overage Cub Scout. Well, I'm not at all sure that I do, but I still want him to ask me. Why? Well, I've never had the chance to say yes. I'd at least like the chance to say no. All right, go get him. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Well, would you like me to stop at your house and bring your bag along? Of course not. She's the reason I'm leaving. Oh, you mean? <laughs> Jed! Hey, Uncle Jed, that little professor shimmied up that tree again. Uh oh, he must have got a hold of some more tonic. Well, don't look at me. I didn't give him any. I'll climb up and fetch him down, Pa. Oh, Ellie, you stay away from him. Heck, fire. I'll get him down out of that tree. Oh, hold it, boy. Them higher limbs up where he's sitting wouldn't hold the likes of you or me. Oh, I wasn't figuring to climb up after him. I'll just knock him down out of there with one of Ellie's cookies. You won't neither. Well, he sure ain't any good for eating. I'll climb down, everybody. I'll go up and get him. No, Granny, you're too old. A 30 foot fall at your age, you could be stove up for a whole day. <laughs> What'll we do? We'll figure something. Commander Bill! What, Master Hathaway? Have I ever told you you look remarkably like a condor? Be careful! Think of your responsibility! If you fall, that egg won't have a father! Howdy, Miss Jane. I reckon you've seen him. Yes, how did he get up there? Granny's tonic. Have you got any more? Yeah, I got a few. Why'd you do that? I'm going up after him. <laughs> Have you seen Miss Hathaway? Not for a couple of hours. Her and the little bird watching professor left here together. She was supposed to pick up my luggage. I tried to sneak out of the house just now, and my wife almost caught me. Why are you running from your wife? Why am I running from my wife? Because... <laughs> Why am I running from my wife? I love that little woman. <laughs> No, but the professor did propose. She turned me down. And what's the congratulations for? May I tell? Of course. We have just become the proud foster parents of a seven-pound condor. <laughs> Come be Casper. We must make arrangements for the sitter. Tom! Hey. You want to see something you won't believe? We just seen it. Not this, you ain't. <laughs> Ellie's chicken is playing the monkey's piano. <laughs> she must have got into my tummy. <laughs> Granny, I just checked your geranium. Don't tell me the worms is. They's doing like this. <laughs> well, Granny, just like I said, this may not be the biggest batch you ever made, but it's a good one. <laughs> Well, now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.